Like any industry, there are successes and failures in the world of gaming. For every good game, there are going to be one or two not so good ones. But some of the games released over the years are just so insanely bad that you have to wonder why they were even released in the first place. What's up guys, my name is Burnsy, and today we're going to be counting down the top 10 worst games ever made and sold to the public. Let me know if you've played any of these in the comment section below, and if you have played some, go ahead and rank it out of 10 for me. Let's get started. We are running a $200 Amazon gift card giveaway the entire month. All you have to do to enter is like this video, be subscribed, turn on your notifications, and comment why you want to win with your Twitter handle attached. I will announce the winner at the end of the month on Twitter. Number 10, Umbrella Corp. Kicking off our list is this awful Resident Evil spin-off simply titled Umbrella Corp. The idea here was okay, I guess. It was an online competitive third-person shooter where you played as agents of the Umbrella Corp as you battle each other and avoid random zombies and collect DNA samples. But the game itself was just terrible. The graphics were insanely outdated, the handling was awful, and the bugs and glitches were plentiful. Take a look at the gameplay you're watching and keep in mind that this game came out in 2016. While people tend to point towards Resident Evil 6 and Operation Raccoon City as the worst in the franchise, I think it's safe to say that this one takes the cake. I mean, I understand that it's a spin-off, but at least put some effort into your game. This is just awful. Number 9. Fighter Within Chances are you forgot this game even existed, and that's probably a good thing. Released in November of 2013 for the Xbox One, this was a fighting game meant to show off the power of Microsoft's new version of the Kinect. That right there was the first main problem, as we all know that the Kinect was basically just a glorified tech demo. I threw mine in the garbage shortly after purchasing the Xbox One. But even if it weren't for the Kinect not functioning properly, this game still would have been absolutely horrible. The game was complete garbage. It's hard to think that anyone actually thought that making a very specific fighting game on the technically inferior Kinect was a good idea. This was likely just thrown together so the Xbox One would have a few more titles available at its launch. I know the people that make these types of games are probably super proud of their work, but where is the adult in the room that's like, no guys, this isn't happening, we're not doing this, this is awful. Number 8. Superman 64. While you may have expected to see this game higher on the list, we decided to cut it a little slack for two reasons. First of all, the game gets bagged on a lot on lists like this, and secondly, the rest of the games on this list are even worse. Now, am I defending Superman 64? Absolutely not, this game is horrible. After being rushed through development and released months too early, Superman 64 is blatantly unfinished and is famously difficult because of it. Aside from the obvious technical problems, the game design is almost impressively terrible. 90% of the missions involve Superman just flying through a series of rings because that's definitely how you defeat Lex Luthor, you fly through some rings. However, Superman 64 actually sold super well and was one of the best-selling games on the console that year. Nothing is more frustrating than a horrible game that actually turns a hefty profit. I guess that sort of explains why you see an abundance of terrible games every single year that never really take off. Perhaps developers are like, we're really bad at making games, so let's make an absolutely terrible game, and maybe we can fool the public into buying it. Number 7. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Mega Battle it was released slightly before the 2017 live-action movie reboot Power Rangers Mega Battle. It is a side-scrolling beat-em-up in the same style as Final Fight or the old Ninja Turtles arcade games. This could have been an awesome game. A beat-em-up with the Power Rangers? With a concept that simple, it's hard to believe that they managed to screw it up as much as they did. But wow. Wow did they really screw it up. Mega Battle was broken as hell at release, with the game constantly freezing up on you or crashing altogether. And even when it wasn't shutting itself down, the fighting mechanics themselves were incredibly flawed. The hitboxes of enemies were too small to actually hit consistently, and the power-up system made absolutely no sense at all. Not to mention that there are only a handful of enemy types throughout the entire game, and the Megazord segments are just on-rail shooter sections as opposed to actual boss fights. When are we going to get an awesome Power Rangers game? It really seems like they all suck and I used to watch that show every Saturday morning when I was a kid. It was amazing. Let me play a good game, please. Number 6. Big Rigs – Over the Road Racing This racing game was famously released in pre-alpha state and has since garnered a cult following. Not because it's good, but because it is incredibly terrible. You took control of a big truck hauling illegal goods while you raced against the clock to avoid law enforcement. 
basically a racing version of Grand Theft Auto. But due to the game being released completely unfinished, there were countless problems with it. First of all, the game has no AI, so you can just drive through missions with no opposition. The game also has no hit detection whatsoever, meaning that you can drive through any and all obstacles. So not only do you not actually have to race anyone, but you don't even have to steer. There is also now an infamous bug where driving in reverse doesn't actually have a cap speed, allowing you to reach insane speeds while driving backwards and warp through all of your obstacles. Well, believe it or not, the developers of this game actually went on to work on the wildly popular League of Legends. Interesting. Number 5. Ghostbusters 2016 Regardless of how you felt about the 2016 movie reboot of Ghostbusters, there's no denying that the game that came along with it was absolute garbage. So, they were both terrible. The movie was awful, and not surprisingly, so was the game. This piece of garbage was released on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Steam. It was a top-down twin-sync shooter featuring a four-player co-op. Aside from having some of the worst writing I've ever seen in a video game, Ghostbusters 2016 was entirely pointless. The enemies were not interesting, the four characters were laughably unbalanced, and the thing was slapped with a $50 price tag, and it has not gotten a price drop to this day on Steam. And just days after the game was released, the developers Fire Forge games filed for bankruptcy due to them being over $12 million in debt. Gee, I wonder why. Number 4. Pac-Man, the Atari 2600 version. Pac-Man is one of the most beloved video games of all time. But the Atari 2600 port from 1982 is widely regarded as the single worst port of any game ever released. Naturally, after the success of the arcade classic, Namco wanted to expand on the home consoles, an industry that was just starting to kick off. After being developed in just four months, the Pac-Man Atari 2600 port was released and immediately ripped apart by just about everyone. The gameplay was incredibly sluggish and slow compared to the arcade original, as it had to be seriously downgraded in order to match the hardware of the Atari 2600. The sound effects were awful and honestly painful to listen to. Not to mention the game was borderline unplayable due to the plentiful glitches, likely due to the extreme short development time. All of the charm of the original was gone, and many point to this game and E.T. for being the causes of the video game industry crash shortly after. Number 3. Mindjack Released in early 2011, Mindjack was a third-person shooter with an interesting concept. It was set in the future, and you played as an agent with the ability to take over the minds and bodies of random people or robots in the game's world, and then use them as your slaves to help you on the battlefield. But the concept is pretty much the only good thing about this game. The awful writing, terrible voice acting, and really dumb story were just the beginning. These things could have been forgiven if the gameplay itself was fun, but unfortunately it was completely broken. Mindjack has some of the worst AI ever seen in a game, and it makes it almost unplayable. Not to mention that the online components were completely unbalanced, as you had to be a pretty high level to earn the right to rebalance teams. No, seriously, the game used game balance as a reward for playing it. Shouldn't game balance just be part of the game from the start? Mindjack was widely regarded as one of the worst games of the 21st century, and I can't really argue with that. It really is that terrible. Number 2. E.T. The Extraterrestrial Now, the movie version is actually amazing, it's a classic, and you should watch it if you have not. However, this game was a main factor of the industry crash of the early 1980s. E.T. was released in December of 1982, and it was a complete and absolute disaster. It follows the story of the movie, or at least I think it does since it's nearly impossible to figure out what's going on due to the awful graphics, bad controls, and utter lack of direction of any kind. You wander around aimlessly as the alien in an attempt to find pieces of candy and parts of your telephone so you can phone home. However, you have an energy bar at the bottom of your screen that decreases every time you take a step or do any kind of movement. So it's a race against the clock to find all those pieces. This game just sucks. There's really not any redeeming factors here. Despite being a commercial success for being attached to such a great movie, the reviews were awful and the game hardly sold any copies after the first few days on the market. After realizing their failure, Atari famously buried all of their on-sale cartridges in a desert in New Mexico in order to hide their shame and start anew. You know your game is truly awful if you're taking all of the on-sale copies and burying them. I guess that's more admirable than what the Ghostbusters team did by keeping their game $50 on Steam after it was revealed how terrible it was. 
And the number one spot for the top 10 worst games ever made and sold to the public belongs to Ride to Hell Retribution. A game that was so bad that it was actually pulled down from Steam. Ride to Hell Retribution was released in June of 2013 to a critical panning from gamers and critics alike. Nobody liked this game, and nobody should. You played as Jake Conway, a Vietnam veteran who returns home to avenge his brother, who was killed by a biker gang. Originally pitched as a cool open-world biker game, what we got was an awful linear action-adventure game with the single worst voice acting that I have ever heard in my entire life. Horrible writing, bad graphics, boring gameplay, a broken camera, frequent and unsettling sex scenes, and pretty much no redeeming qualities of any kind. Ride to Hell Retribution easily earns the number one spot on today's list. That concludes our list for the top 10 worst games ever made that were sold to the public. My name of course is Burnsy, thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope you learned something today. If you'd like to see more videos, there's a playlist down below for your viewing pleasure. If you'd like to submit your own ideas for a future video, click the link below. My name is Burnsy, thanks for stopping by, have yourself a beautiful day, and I will see you next time.